Part 5. In this final section of the Open Response MTEL math videos, we're going to be looking at um, that t the t some samples that were provided by the Department of Education to help teachers see you know, what a 4 is. Now, that means you've got to pause the video. Pause it now. Okay, you paused it. Now let's talk about it. This first section here is really good because the student, the, the teacher that wrote this took this first paragraph and they talk about all the things that the student did correctly. I like that. That's important. They gave specific examples of what the student, the teacher did correct, uh, the student did correctly. And uh, I like how they pointed out that the, te that the student, pardon me, was able to find out the correct diameter of that uh, rectangle. That's, that's important. I also like how they, they pointed out that they were able to find out the height of the triangle by subtracting the two segments. Um, that's important too because we had to do that as well. So not only do they mention that they use the correct area formulas for the rectangle and the triangle, but they also point out these smaller details that the student did correctly. Then um, they go on in this next section here and they start going to, you know, errors and misconceptions. Well, they point out in the errors and misconceptions the student had difficulty with the area of that semicircle. They also point out that they used the formula for the circumference. And they, they, they give that specific example. To Notice it's exactly what the, the teacher wrote. Um, and they also talk about decimal multiplication. Again, they write down exactly what the student wrote. Um, and uh, it talks about place values. They're explaining why it's wrong. Another thing I like about this is that they, um, when they go about this, they actually solve it again. So that you see their work. You see what the answer that they got for the area of a rectangle. You see the, uh, their work and their formula for the area of a triangle. You see their work and formula for the area of a semicircle. Um, I do have a little uh, problem with this piece right here. They don't show how you get from uh, 4.5 times pi to the answer. That's really not accurate. They, they really should go that extra distance. I think they should go the extra di di distance and show, you know, that you have to do 3.14 times 4.5. And that's how you get the 14.13. The um, but either way, if, if they don't include it, if you choose not to include it, you're still going to have to do that calculation. So, the, so why wouldn't you include it in your essay? I don't know. Anyways, they go through and they... Um, Again, they do all the workouts, so they're showing their work, they're showing the formulas, so they're demonstrating that they understand the, the core concepts and that they are able to apply the core concepts to get to the correct answer. Um, if we go further, and this is still only half the essay, look what they get. They come up with a very clear answer sentence at the end. You know, and they talk about that um, if you do all these steps out, you're going to get approximately one-third. That is the first half of the essay. Most teachers, you know, if they don't miss it completely, most teachers, you know, do a, you know, should be getting, uh, be doing that. This is where teachers really fall short. It's that alternative way to help, un to help enhance the student's understanding. I would look at how, what their alternative ways here are. This one talks about decimal uh, multiplication. Um, well, it actually has a few things. But I would look at how they provided an alternative ways and how that, is, uh, how that might be helpful. And look, they're giving examples of how the, that alternative way could be used. That's important that you want to include in your essay. Not only give the alternative way, but maybe come up with, you know, give a throw out a couple examples of how that might be helpful. So I want you to take a look at this portion here. Now, one thing that they don't do in their essay, they don't have a summary section. And I don't know if they just intentionally didn't include that and just wanted to give you, you know, these major points. 
but I do think that it's missing that, and I do think that, you know, in order for you to get, you know, have a little bit more success on this test, is I would finally close it off with, you know, in this essay, you know, we looked at how while the student was able to do these things and these things correct, they had difficulty with this and this, and we provided a very cool blah blah strategy that helped them better understand our core ideas of decimal multiplication, area of a semicircle, and ratios. Something like that I think is needed. Uh, let's look at the last one real quick. I want to point out just very quickly some things with this last essay. Uh, let me uh, let me pull it out. Okay, here's just very, very quickly with this last essay, I'll enlarge it so that you can see a little clearer. Um, I already annotated it. This, this teacher, when they were analyzing the student's work, notice how they constantly refer to the student's work. She got the area of the rectangle. She tried to get the area of a semicircle. She knew the next step, blah, blah. Her thinking about this, you know, the, student ans the student's answer doesn't make sense. What I'm, what I'm getting at is they're constantly referring back to the student. What the student was doing, what the student's answer was, what the student's work was. And that's critical that you make this a student-centered essay. And you don't lose sight of that. Here's another thing that I liked about this uh, essay, and you're going to... You're going to pause this and you're going to read it over more closely. I like that they use transition language. First, you know, sometimes, however, you know, and they go into this new part. Also, when, so they're giving us transitions. So I know what the, where, you know, the student's doing good. Then this, however, lets me know that it's a change in directions and that we're going to now talk about the things that the student did wrong. This is also when. This gives me direction that, you know, there's, there's more things the student did wrong. Um, again, the teacher show, has a section, a whole section in, this, in their open response where they show their calculations. And that's important. Again, you have to apply the concepts. And you have to show your work. If you don't do this, they're going to be like, yeah, you stated in your essay, but you never showed us that you could do it on your own. So it's critical that you, you clearly... Um, start a, a show how you would answer this and you apply the core concepts that are being used in this question. Um, again, they have, um, where's their open risk? They have, uh, well, they don't have an answer sentence. They have this, which is a, equivalent to their answer sentence. It's okay. It's actually cool, but, you know, it's, that's their answer sentence. And then this is their alternative their whole section, which is an alternative way to approach these problems, they talk about the decimal multiplication, and they provide an, an example of, of a way in which the student could have approached the decimal multiplication. This is where most teachers fall short. And then I would add in that summary, uh, that summary paragraph to tie things together. Okay, team, I hope you found these, um, these uh, videos helpful in analyzing the open response questions on the general curriculum math uh, subtest practice question. Again, this is Chris Abraham from GoMath. Uh, definitely, if you need some help, uh, go to Go, the GoMath website, or you could go to uh, one of the MTEL Math workshops, and those are also extremely helpful for teachers that need help on these exams. Thanks. Thanks, team. Have a great day.